Hello everyone, welcome back to the third lecture of the series of operating system. Our today's lecture is about system structure. Myself Mohshumi Shah, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Engineering Department, Narula Institute of Technology. So our today's topic is computer system structure. Here we deal with computer system architecture and operations, I.O. structure, store, storage structure and hierarchy and all that. Before we can explore the detail of how computer system operate, we need a general knowledge of the structure of a computer system. In this lecture, we look at the several part of this structure to around out our background knowledge. So the computer system architecture. A model general purpose computer system consists of one or more CPU and a number of device controller and a number of device controller connected through a common bus connected through a common bus that provide access to a shared memory. Each device controller is a charge of a specific type of device. For example, the disk drive, audio devices and video display. The CPU and the device controller can execute concurrently. Competing for memory cycle. To ensure orderly access to the shared memory, a memory controller is provided. A memory controller is provided whose function is to synchronize access to the memory. For a computer to start running, for instance, when it is powered up or rebooted, it needs to have an initial program to run. This initial program or bootstrap program tends to be simple. Typically, it is stored in read-only memory or ROM or electrically enabled program read-only memory, EPROM. Knowing the general term of firmware, within the computer hardware. It initializes all aspects of the system from CPU register to device controller to memory content. The bootstrap program must know how to load the computer system and to start execution that system. To accomplish this goal, the bootstrap program must locate and load in the memory of the operating system kernel. The operating system then start execution first process such as init and wait for some event to occur. The occurrence of an event is usually signaled by an interrupt from either hardware or software. The hardware may trigger an interrupt at any time by sending a signal to the CPU, usually by way of the system bus. The software may trigger an interrupt by executing a special operation called system call. When a CPU is interrupted, it stops what it is doing and immediately transfer the execution to the fixed location. The fixed location usually contains starting address where the service routine for the interrupt is located. The interrupt service routine executes on completion of the CPU resume the interrupt computation. A timeline of the operation is shown. Later, no? the computer system operations. The computer system IO devices and the CPU can execute concurrently. Each device control is in charge of a particular device type. Each device controlled has a local buffer. The CPU moves data from memory to local buffer. The input output is the form of device of local buffer controller. The device controller informs the CPU it has finished all the operation by causing an interrupt. Now, IO structure. Storage is on one of the may, many type of IO devices within the computer. A large portion of operating system code is dedicated to managing input-output both because it is important to the reliability and performance of the system and because of the varying nature of the device. Therefore, we now provide an overview of 
input output a general purpose computer system consists of cpu and multiple device controller they are connected through a common bus each device controller is charge of a specific type of device depending upon the controller there are many more attached device for instance seven or more device can be attached to a small computer system a device controller maintains some local buffer storage as a special purpose register this device controller is responsible for moving the data between the peripheral device and the controller and its local buffer storage typically operating system have a device driver for each device controller this device driver understand the device controller and present a uniform interface to the device and rest of the operating system to start an input output operation the device driver load to appropriate register within the device controller the device controller in turn examine the content of the register to what action will be take the controller start the transfer to the device to its local buffer once the transfer of data is complete the device controller inform the device driver via an interrupt that it finish its operation the device driver then return the control to the operating system now storage hierarchy The main memory unit is an essential component of any digital computer because of its needed for storing program and data. The memory hierarchy system consists of all storage devices employed in a computer system from slow but high capacity of secondary memory to a related faster main memory. Okay, consider this picture from the top to bottom cost of the memory will decreases and accessing the speed is also decreases but from the bottom to top the storage capacity will decrease and accessing speed will increase okay so what is register a register are the faster of all memories a register is a group of flip flop with each flip flop capable of storing one bit of information an n bit register has a group of n flip flop and it's capable of storing any binary information of n bit cache memory cache is a special and very high speed memory it is the intermediate memory between cpu and main memory the cache is used to storing segment of program currently being executed by the cpu and frequently needed in the present calculation after the main memory the main memory unit communicate directly with the cpu is called main memory the main memory is relatively large and fast memory used to store program and data during the processor execution the principal technology used for the main memory is based on the semiconductor integrated circuit it is a volatile memory it means stored information remain valid as long as the power is applied to the unit then magnetic disk the devices that provide backup storage are called auxiliary memory or secondary memory the most common auxiliary memory is used in computer system is magnetic disk these are used for storing program large data file and other backup information now magnetic tapes magnetic tapes are slow, slow device compared to the magnetic disk generally tapes are used to store backup storage so thank you all and we will meet at the next lecture if you have any query please feel free to contact me thank you